the first time since March. Good morning, church! Good morning. <laughs> oh, what a joy it is to be together live in person this morning. I know our YouTube feed isn't uh, up and running, but hopefully those of you on Facebook uh, can see and hear just fine. Uh, and we should have a recording up on YouTube later on this uh, today. My name is Pastor Kathy, and I want to welcome you to this special service. I ask you uh, to care for one another during our time today. Keep your mask on um, as best you can. I know myself, my glasses are fogging up. Keep your distance. Um, keep your six feet apart distance. Know who's in your bubble and stay safe. Stay healthy. There's enough sanitizer and things floating around, so if you do just accidentally shake hands with someone, use your sanitizer. Um, but I don't encourage that this morning. During our service today, we're calling this Worship in Motion. We ask that you keep silent. No singing. Uh, singing is one of the greatest ways that our virus is shared. So we ask that you worship in motion this morning. When we pray or when we offer our song today, we're going to do it with our hands. So if you're able to stand up when we stand up, join us. If you're able to stretch your arms out, uh, do that along with us. But let your body be an act of worship today. Our offering this morning, first let me say thank you to all of who uh, came early today to set up. Um, I know I'm going to forget somebody, so thank you to all of you who are uh, helping out with the service this morning. Our offering today is at the bucket in the driveway entrances. Um, thank you for continuing to remember your church in this time of crisis. Our church is needed now more than ever from our food pantry to pastoral care calls and we are on the active front lines of this crisis. Your generosity, your giving makes a difference. We have hit our fall slump as we expected with our finances, so we will need some creative ways to make up our financial losses by the end of the year. So your generosity is making a difference today. And I mention that because next Sunday we will not, well, today we will not have our virtual coffee hour after this service because I think we're going to need to rest after this. <laughs> um, but next Sunday after our recorded service next week, we will have a virtual church town hall over Zoom. You can join us. I'll send out the link on Friday and again on Sunday morning. Um, the church town hall will take place around 1045 next Sunday morning. And we will hear from our finance team about our current needs and current um, and future dreams. We have some goals for next year we want to share with you all. And speaking of next Sunday, next Sunday we will have special music during our recorded service from our bell choir. So um, I hope you've enjoyed those online services. They've been very special to me to put together. Um, so next week we will have some special music from our bells. I think that's all I have for now, so I invite you now to take a breath, center yourself for our time of worship. liturgist this morning. During our service, our call and responses today will be with our hands. So if you see Jean and I doing something, we invite you to mimic that motion with us. So you might want to put that coffee down and you can uh, get your arms and get shake it out, shake out the morning bugs and join us with our motions. Testing. Okay. Though the, mo the, though the storm clouds of doubt and fear threaten to overcome us. So we have 
our hands out and we are ready to receive. And then watch Jean for this next motion. God leads us into ways of peace. When the darkness of war and the deep pit of anger reach toward us. So like we are ready to receive, ready to uh, anticipate. For this one, you're gonna have to have your feet on the ground. You ready? God lifts and carries us through the darkness with hope and light. Lord of hope and life be with us today. God of mercy and peace, lead our lives. In this moment, gracious God, you have called us away from the world to a place and a time where we can commune with you and with one another. Hallow this communion, we pray. Calm our anxious spirits that we may be set apart to hear your word of truth through which we receive grace to bring about the obedience of faith. Open us to the reality of your all-embracing love both in this place and in the wider world. May we, by our words and actions, be bearers of your kingdom in the name and the spirit of the Christ. Amen. Amen. So our song in motion this morning is My God is So Big, and I invite you just to follow along. You can stand or you can be seated. It's up to you. enter into our time of prayer we do want to name prayer requests um, I don't have my phone on me so I can't see if there's been any texted to me um, but we know that God hears what's in our hearts um, we know that God just knows God has been with us these last six months and God continues to be with us as we face an uncertain future with this health crisis but we know and trust with confidence that God is at work through those doctors and nurses and those researchers trying to find a cure. So we ask God's blessings and prayers upon them. I do wanna lift up, uh, we lift in prayer, Alice Watson. Um, I visited with Alice last week. She's doing okay. Um, if you get a chance to give her a call, drop her a note. Um, so we wanna keep her in prayers. And we continue to pray for those families that are grieving in the, our church life as we anticipate All Saints Day coming up in November. Um, it's tough to think about all the names that are going to be on that list this year. So let's pause for a moment of silent prayer. I will offer the pastoral prayer, and then you can join me, um, if you would, silently in the Lord's Prayer. Let us pray. Living and loving God in this holy time and space. God, we are so grateful for this chance to gather this morning. Thank you, God, for those who are watching this on our Facebook feed. God, thank you for those who will see this service later. God, may they be blessed. May we all be blessed by this chance to just be the church as we've known it for many, so many parts of our lives. And God, we ask that you just hear our prayers this morning. You know what's in our hearts. God, you know who's on our minds. You know what is needed in each and every situation. And in all things, God, we ask that your will be done. Bring healing, bring renewal, bring wholeness, bring hope. 
And help us, God, to be the best church here in your kingdom, well, as your kingdom come, that we can be. And now, God, as one body in spirit, in one voice, we pray together now, God, the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Our scripture readings today are from Paul, as he calls us to a community of love. First, from Galatians 3, 28, There is neither Jew nor Gentile, neither slave nor free, nor is there male and female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. Second, from Romans 14, 1 to 12, Accept the one whose faith is weak, without quarreling over disputable matters. One person's faith allows them to eat anything, but another whose faith is weak eats only vegetables. The one who eats everything must not treat with contempt the one who does not. The one who does not eat everything must not judge the one who does, for God has accepted them. Who are you to judge someone else's servant? To their own master, servants stand or fall and they will stand, for the Lord is able to make them stand. One person considers one day more sacred than another. Another considers every day alike. Each of them should be fully convinced in their own mind. Whoever regards one day as special does so to the Lord. Whoever eats meat does so to the Lord, for they give thanks to God. And whoever abstains does so to the Lord and give thanks to God. For none of us lives for ourselves alone, and none of us dies for ourselves alone. If we live, we live for the Lord, and if we die, we die for the Lord. So whether we live or die, we belong to the Lord. For this very reason, Christ died and returned to life so that he might be the Lord of both the dead and the living. So then, why do you judge your brother or sister? Or why do you treat them with contempt? For we all, for we will all stand before God's judgment seat. It is written, as surely as I live, says the Lord, every knee will bow before me, every tongue will acknowledge God. So then, each of us will give an account of ourselves to God. Thanks be to God for these words. I invite us now to prepare for a message for the young at heart. Jean, keep your microphone on for a minute. Got it. I need, uh, I have a question for you. Okay. What's your favorite breakfast? Oh, Greek yogurt with nuts and maple syrup and frozen blueberries and bananas. Oh my goodness. <laughs> you know what my favorite breakfast is? Cheerios. No. Pretty close. Oh. Pretty close. Lucky charms. Oh, there you go. <laughs> there you go. You know, just because, well, Greek yogurt for breakfast isn't quite my favorite. <laughs> It doesn't mean that her breakfast is any less good, and I'm sure those of you watching today um, have a different breakfast than I do. I say Lucky Charms, but really it's any cereal that I like, um, any breakfast cereal. And you know, friends, we do eat differently, and guess what? That's okay. I'm sure you've seen that at Food Pantry, too, a number of folks that eat differently and choose what they'd like. Well, friends, we also dress differently and we have different abilities. We even celebrate different holidays. And we live, some of us, in different ways. Some of these lead to judgmental name calling. I don't like her because she likes Greek yogurt. I'm not going to call her a name. <laughs> well, the Bible tells us, though, that we should not judge people by these sorts of things. I love in our Bible passage, Romans 14:1. Accept those whose faith is weak 
without quarreling over disputable matters. The author tells us that we have to accept each other and become a community together. We don't need to judge each other by our cereals, <laughs> by our clothes or our skin color. Rather, we need to, as well as Jesus teaches us, to love. So let's be glad that we can love each other. But I think for our, for our young at heart message, let's be glad we can eat anything we want for breakfast, right? <laughs> let's pray. God of creation, while we all have your thumbprint on our hearts we, and with our eyes, we, we see our differences. It's hard to see the things that make us one in you through Jesus. Help us to look beyond the breakfast choices and, and whatever other choices we find and the lifestyle choices to, to seeing each other as siblings in faith. Open our eyes to see you. Amen. I want to thank Tom Olson for making our plexiglass thing here. It's allowing me to take my mask off comfortably um, to keep us all safe uh, as we share the message this morning. Yesterday was Larry Stenner's memorial uh, visitation. Those of you who attended 8 o'clock service knew Sandy and Larry real well. Um, I don't know if you remember or not, or if you knew or not, Sandy and Larry were our communion stewards um, for every time we had communion. They're the ones that brought the yummy Fosdals bread for us. And I had the opportunity yesterday to lead the family in a brief service, honoring God while remembering Larry as a dad, as a grandpa, and as a coach. And it sure was a special time to be with them and to see their family come together for this holy time. Towards the end of the service, I noticed the kids, they were all a little squirrely. There was probably a half dozen of them sitting, running around there. And so I offered just impromptu to do a children's sermon right before the benediction. And this impromptu children's sermon, I'm going to tell you, it was a blessing to me as it was, I hope, to them. We talked about the word love. If you remember Sandy and Larry and their kids, love, love comes to mind. We shared words from 1 Corinthians, the love chapter, and I ended by asking the kids, how much do you think your grandpa loved you? This much? This much? Or this much? So picture six little kids, probably under the age of five or, or six or under, all of them go like this. And somebody did get smacked in the back of the head. And <laughs> but all of them did this. And I believe this morning, friends, love is a message that we all need to hear and hold on to today and every day. We think of the love of Jesus when we close our eyes and we imagine the cross. We think of the love of God when the actions of our ancestors necessitated the coming of our Savior. We think of the unconditional love of God that remains with us as we consider the movement of the Holy Spirit. So as it is worship in motion this morning, friends, let me ask you, how much do you think God loves you? Let's see your hands. And everybody's doing that. That is wonderful. And we're all adults here. We're not smacking anybody upside the head yet. <laughs> How about those that you disagree with? You don't have to show me. Keep this in mind, though. How about protesters, the military, people on the front lines, politicians, the police, or the Black Lives Matter movement? How can this be so? How can the love of God reach us all? It's easy for me to stand up here and tell you this is a truth this morning. But do we really believe it? I think the answer is found in the understanding that Christ's death changed everything. The answer to this possibility is in the playing field of our lives that it was leveled so that all would have an equal chance to thrive. 
That said, I know sin continues to push its way in. And not only do we build up walls of division around us, but we build up hills that we have to climb. Uh, a key to overcoming this, to overcoming those, bar those barriers, is to living a life of love, a rule of love. There's an English proverb that says, faults are thick where love is thin. God demonstrates the opposite. Faults are thin where love is thick. Keep that in mind for a moment. Friends, if nothing else this morning, seeing you all has shown that love is thick here and with our church. Love is thick in our homes and in our family lives. Love is thick because we make it a priority in the situations that we understand and we have some control over. I want us to consider this morning that love can be and should be thick all the time in the kingdom of God. Prior to our Romans passage today, we read of Paul in Corinth, and there was a problem there over eating some meat that was sacrificed to idols. And Paul, he didn't object to this exactly, but he himself wouldn't participate in the pagan rituals. He goes so far to say that he considers it even wrong to try to encourage others to violate their own sense of right and wrong. And this experience gives him some ideas on how to be a community, be a community of love. So now we come to Rome, and Paul, he finds a need for a similar rule. He calls upon the people to give priority in their lives to community, not to self. Not selfish ambitions, but to the greater good for the love of the people. Paul didn't attempt to change the opinions of the community members at all even. He offered a perspective that shifted the focus. They were called to no longer judge others, but were rather expected to examine their own beliefs, their own actions, and their own faith. Why? Why this call to community rather than to self? Friends, this is exactly what Jesus did. This is what Jesus expected. When Jesus paid the price on the cross for our behalf, it wasn't so that one race could be better than another. His sacrifice wasn't for the elite or the poor. His sacrifice, his gift of love on the cross, it was a call for us all to adopt the mindset that we are on equal ground as followers of Jesus Christ. And as believers in the Holy Spirit, we need to say that in our community, in our worldview, all are on equal ground because of grace. Paul made this very clear in our Galatians reading. Those who are baptized in Christ now belong to him. The old self is gone, and by putting on the character of Jesus, we further seal our common ground as God's good creation. And the character of Jesus is the acts of love in community. I believe this call to community is a call to love. It's a call to lead with the example of Jesus Christ to put the needs of our community first. It is a call to level the playing field. And I can imagine uh, with Larry, it's a, he was a cheerleader. It was, it's a call to cheer one another on and help one another as we finish this race called life. Friends, this is about believing when we say, this, say these words. God loves you this much, and so do I. Let's pray. Awesome God of grace and power, you are the great equalizer. We know in our core that we are all your creation made for good. As we've done our kingdom building work, God, we messed up big time. We've given in to sin of selfishness, narrow-mindedness. We have given in to the sin of judging something that we were never created to do. 
Thank you, God, for not leaving us in this place. Thank you, God, for moving in our hearts and opening our eyes and opening our whole self as we live by the character of Jesus. Amen. So the ministry moment this morning, this is our time to put this into practice. Here comes your so what, your homework for the week. Does anybody have anyone in their lives that they disagree with? <laughs> yeah, yeah, even the dogs are chirping in. I can hear them across the way. <laughs> or how about someone that you don't have a lot in common with in your life? Yeah. I want you to give this leveling the playing field a try this week. See if you can find a common thread with that person that unites us all as humanity. Now I know there is a vulnerability in doing this and putting yourself out there, but if the receiver also shows vulnerability, can you imagine the fruits that are you're gonna see from this? Brené Brown, one of my favorite uh, writers, she says, it's easy to see talking about businesses. It's easy to see managers as the holders of power in a performance evaluation. But managers can level the playing field and, and put yourself in this situation. Managers can level the playing field by opening themselves up for feedback, being vulnerable. Asking a question like, how can I support you better? Or what is, what is an area in which I can improve? Those questions demonstrate to the employee or the person you're talking to that no one is perfect or has all the answers and you're in it together. You can do this with someone of a different race, different political point of view, or even someone who has different values than you do. When you share with them, I ask you though that you come from a place of love in your heart. Maybe you come from a place to see them as God sees them. Maybe to see them as similar to you. And the priority of this week is, com is community and love. Let us pray. God, this is an experiment that is going to need courage. This is an experiment, though, that with profound implications. Help us, God, to all stand on equal ground as you lay, that you lay before us. Help us to celebrate our diversity and embrace our humanity. Amen. Well, friends, I do invite you now, if you're able, to stand as we sing together in motion with our hands our closing song, Awesome God, and I picked this one because I believe that anytime we have diversity and differences, that things that just don't mesh with our personalities, it is God's work that makes that relationship possible. So I want to celebrate our awesome God this morning. Um, we'll do this, maybe we could do this twice with music and then we'll do it once with no music, but just do it. Cop, I'll try my best to lead you in the motions. <laughs> I can invite you to stand if you're able. Benediction.
And before I do, parking lot folks, is there any instructions for leaving? Don't run us over. Don't run anybody <laughs> over. <laughs> Head out safely. If you yep. need to uh, drop off your offer offering, Ricky's got the bucket. <laughs> Friends, I want you to remember these words from Paul this week. Galatians 3.28 there is neither Jew nor Greek, there is neither slave nor free, nor is there male or female. For it says you, but I'm going to say we are all one in Christ Jesus. Amen. Go in peace. Thank you.